Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the Elemental Maker. Today, I want to show you how I get my balls. <laughs> more, more appropriately, how I cast these, uh, these lead balls for my ball mill. Now, on my last video, I showed refining rain scrap into these pretty little lead muffins, muffins of death. <laughs> and, uh, and a lot of you guys were asking, how the heck do you go from that to this? So today I'm going to show you that. To the rocketry crew out there, don't worry. I am working on the uh, composite propellants, just trying to get that down before I actually do a video on it. So, jumping ahead to this. First step, you got to have a mold. Now, there's tons of different molds out there. This one happens to be a Lee. Uh, they're pretty cheap. You can get them right on Amazon. And this is a uh, 0.69 diameter, 0.69 inch uh, diameter ball here. And this is a single cavity mold, but they do make multiple cavity molds for uh, smaller sizes. Basically, you literally just, you have your, uh, your pour plate, whatever the heck it's called, and uh, you pour your lead down into there. You leave a little bit exposed because it'll contract, so you want it to pull extra molten material down into the, the actual ball, otherwise your ball will shrink up. And <laughs> you don't want shrunk balls, that's for sure. So once you actually get this cast and it solidifies, you give that a good tap with a hammer or a wooden dowel or whatever, and that breaks the little uh, connecting piece called the sprue. So there's a little sprue of lead going up to the top. That cuts it off. And then you're just left with a nice round lead ball. And it's, it's really that simple. The big trick with these is basically lubricating them properly and prepping the mold for use. So you can see I have some carbon black kind of left in there, but you need to soot your molds before you actually use them. They do make some sprays and stuff, but honestly, nothing beats, beats a lighter. And you literally just get it up in there. You kind of want to see that that soot coming off the flame. And there we go. That side's good. I'll just prep the other side. And what the sooting does, it, it, it's carbon black. It's so basically, you know, a, a form of graphite carbon, and it acts as a lubricant, high temperature lubricant, and it prevents the lead from sticking to the aluminum mold. So pretty simple, no worries about that. Outside of that, the only other lubrication you need to worry about is these pins. I usually just hit them with a tiny, tiny bit of paraffin. I always keep a block handy, so I'll just lightly touch them. And then this uh, this piece up here, I'll just hit that with a little wax when it's nice and hot. And that's all there is to it. One other thing you need, and I have it off screen, is a big bucket of water. So I'm just going to let this sucker get up to heat, and I will show you guys some of the uh, lead muffins that we cast in the last video melting. Quick aside on the subject of rain scrap. Ooh, check this monster out. <laughs> you know what that is? This is the base of a five inch naval shell, a naval artillery shell. So uh, my wife's grandfather, who I got that, uh, that ceramic hot plate from, was stationed aboard the USS Natoma Bay during World War II in the Pacific. So this shell here was actually probably fired on Okinawa can only imagine the projectile that went with it. I mean, my God. I believe they were actually separate. So you had the projectile, which was loaded into the breech, and then a huge brass casing that uh, went in behind it. He was one of the machinists aboard the ship, so he was probably friends with one of the gunners, got him a, a you know spent shell, turned the, uh, the bulk of it off on the lathe so they could sneak it off the ship. Yeah, see there? Five-inch... Mark V, U.S. Navy. Pretty damn cool. Makes for a hell of a pen holder. All right, as you can see, we got some molten lead in the bottom there. I'll always keep a little bit in your pot just so it doesn't take super long to heat up. Drop a little in. Yeah, that muffin's melting nicely. It's like watching the Terminator. <laughs> a little less entertaining than, uh, you know, molten metal that fights back, but still, 
So while the lead's melting, I like to put my, uh, my mold just up in the cavity, get some extra heat in it. It does take a few pours to actually, quite a few, uh, to get the cavity up to temperature. This mold needs to be uh, probably around 700 degrees to start dropping nice round lead balls with, uh, you know, you're, you're kind of going for, it's not a mirror, but a good, nice, clean, shiny surface. Uh, while it's still below temperature, you'll see the balls coming out wrinkly. And you don't want wrinkly balls. So one thing to note about these pots, this is where the molten lead actually comes out of. So if I raise this up, there you go. They always drip. No matter what you do, you always get a little bit of drippage out of there. So one thing to know if you're, uh, if you're doing this to for ball mill purposes. You want to get enough media to fill your chamber, your, uh, so this region here that's actually doing the active milling, to about 50% capacity. So this would probably, yeah, this would be enough for uh, proper charge of this mill, mill jar. And that is a, uh, that's a fair bit of lead. Another thing to keep in mind is that lead Milling media is not appropriate in all applications. There are some applications where steel's better. Some guys use brass. Uh, they also make alumina uh, ball mill media. So it's actually aluminum oxide, uh, like sintered uh, balls. And that's, that's a very, very hard and abrasive material. Uh, that would probably be good for making metal powders and that sort of stuff. But uh, if you're milling compositions, such as, uh, you know, black powder. Lead is my go-to. All right, let's see if we are ready to pour here. There we go. So you can kind of see when it glasses over, that's when your sprue has cooled. I always just knock my sprue back off into the lead. That way it stays hot. Bring it over to my bucket and drop a ball. So let's take a look at that first drop. There we go. So you can see, focus. There we go. You see, it is a very ugly ball. Lots of wrinkles to it. So I'm going to cast a bunch more and I'll show you when they start getting nice. There we go. You should see it contract inward. There it is. So you see that little dimple on the top there. That is where the cooling of the metal makes it contract so it pulls in uh, from the molten sprue up here and keeps that void totally filled. So here's what we've casted thus far. You can see quite a few that are uh, pretty well distorted. But you can see as we were coming up to temperature, they started getting nicer and nicer. But now that our mold's up to temperature, it'll drop good ones pretty much every pour. I went and ignored the machine for, uh, say, 10 minutes or so. <laughs> well, uh, I added another big chunk of light, so I was letting it warm back up to temperature. And it made a nice little Stalagmite, stalactite, I forget which one's up, which one's down, but <laughs> a nice little stalag something of uh, molten lead. Well, once molten lead. That's pretty cool. Here's one dropping in the water. It's best to do that right in front of a computer. All right, guys, there you have it. How to cast your own lead ball mill media from completely free range scrap. Fun little setup. It's not too expensive to get into. These molds are uh, 25 30 bucks on Amazon or at your local uh, reloading or, or uh, that sort of supply. And uh, these heat controls, these uh, production pots are maybe 70 to 100 bucks. I forget exactly how much. I got this one used uh, pretty darn cheap. A good bit of fun, very simple, and uh, it teaches some good principles. You learn about the contraction of metals, and uh, as you know, they cool. Good bit of fun. 
Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Please don't forget to thumbs up, subscribe, click that little dingleberry next to subscribe, drop a comment, and I will see you next time. Have a great one. Just as a safety note, anytime you're working with lead, make sure you wash your hands thoroughly afterwards. Lead is a cumulative neurotoxin, so it, uh, it affects your cognition and all that good stuff. I always use a super heavy duty scrubbing pumice soap like Gojo or, uh, or Lava and give it a few good washes. Just, you don't want to get lead. It's, uh, it's nasty stuff and it's uh, pretty debilitating effects. So you don't want it, don't get it. Good hygiene, that's all there is.